great way to support our salty gameplay is by building your next deck using our TCG Player affiliate link provided in the description below. Now let's get into the game. What is up, Salt Road Patrol? It is Table Salt EDH, and on this week's episode, we are doing a tribal bash. On this week's episode, we are touching each other's tribal parts. We're doing a touchy tribal theme. We're doing touchy tribals. <laughs> On this week's episode, we are doing a tribal game, a tribal game, and we needed to bring in our good friend, James McCoy. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. So, uh, I am coming in with the Ur Dragon as my commander. Big, beefy, makes other dragons cheaper with his eminence ability, and uh, also allows for a lot of cards to be brought in every time he attacks. So, he's big, expensive, so I gotta have a lot of ramp, and all five colors, so it's it's difficult, but I love this deck. All right, today uh, I'm gonna be bringing in Abomination of Lanoir. Uh, you guys may remember uh, what happened in Commander Legends, so I'm hoping to have a repeat of that episode. Obviously, the goal of this is to build up Abom, build up my army of elves, swing in, hopefully do some you know blocking evasion things like that, and uh, hopefully to take everyone down again. It was a great feeling. And this week, I am going to be swimming in the river with Merfolk, Merfolk Tribal with Kumena. And uh, basically, I just want to build up a whole bunch of Merfolk and swim to Sterling for safety. For me, I'm doing slivers. You either love them or hate them. I personally love them. The first sliver is the only commander for slivers. The goal of the deck is just to bring out a bunch of different slivers with low drops that all give my slivers different abilities, a lot of evasion, a lot of pumping. Um, and I'm really hoping to finally get that one. All right, let's check the game out. All right, let's get into the game. Nope. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Here's the, the thing. Uh, Sean and I still haven't won a game, but he can't lose this Yeah, one. so he... <laughs> well, technically you won a game. game, we just lost the footage. Which is fucking bullshit, <laughs> God! <laughs> God! That and it was, so it, was, it was a it good one. It was a really too. good one. Like, it was... <laughs> It was. Like, I, I think it would have made me famous, even. Mm -hmm. well, um, yeah, Getrog popped the fuck off, and... It was with one of my favorite decks. It was a comeback. Ah, don't remind me. Let's let's play this game. Okay. Right. Let's play this one. Yeah. 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 Alright, Salt Fam. Let's kick off the first game of 2021. Dom plays a command tower and passes his turn. Keith plays an island and taps it for a title warrior. Sterling plays an exotic orchard, and because Keith has an island, he taps that exotic orchard for a blue and plays a Gale Rider Sliver. McCoy plays a command tower and then passes his turn. Dom plays a forest and then somehow taps for his Arcane Signet, which he always has in his first two turns. Keith plays a forest and then taps his forest and an island for Sterling's favorite card, not Triumph of the Hordes, but three visits. He uses three visits to find another forest, puts that into play, and then he attacks Dom for one and passes his turn. Keith ends his turn, and because he's the monarch, he draws a card. Sterling plays a swamp and then taps his swamp and his exotic orchard for a green to play a gem hide sliver, allowing all his slivers to tap for one of any color of mana. He then uses Gale Rider sliver with flying to attack Keith to take away monarch and ping him for one. Sterling ends his turn and draws his card for Monarch. McCoy plays a Haven of the Dragon Spirit for his land for turn and then passes. Dom plays a Terramorphic Expanse and then taps his Command Tower and his Forest for a Priest of Titania, aka Princess Titania, and then passes his turn. Keith plays an Island, then taps for a Herald's Horn, declaring Merfolk, plays a Merfolk Looter, and then passes his turn. Sterling plays a Swamp, then taps for a Soul Ring, and then brings out a Chromatic Lantern, then redundantly plays a Mana Weft Sliver. And with Gale Rider Sliver, Sterling pings Dom for one. He ends his turn, so he draws for Monarch. McCoy unfortunately misses his third land drop and then passes his turn. At the end of McCoy's turn, Dom cracks his Terramorphic Expanse to go find a forest, and then we begin Dom's turn. Dom plays a Reese the Exile, aka Ross from Friends. He then taps Titanic Lady for two and Arcane Signet for a throwback, Elvis Champion, which gives all elves plus one plus one and Forest Walk. 
Dom then ends his turn. On the start of Keith's turn, his Herald Horn triggers, so he looks at the top card, and it's a merfolk, so he puts it in his hand. Keith then plays a Simic Guildgate for turn. He then taps two for his commander, Kamena. He then taps Merfolk Looter to draw a card and discard a card. He discards the card he actually drew, Wake Thrasher. Keith then taps one for River Sneak and then passes his turn. Sterling plays a much needed island for turn. He then taps four for Explosive Vegetation. With the Explosive Vegetation, Sterling grabs a Mountain and a Plains. He then taps five for Bring to Light using five different colors, which allows him to play a Sliver Hive Lord, giving his Slivers indestructible. Sterling decides to not stir the pot and passes his turn after a lengthy scuffle. Heart right. of the cards! It's gonna be a land. Whoa. It's a land. No, it's not. Uh, but it's a soul ring. I will tap two for lightning graves. There you go. That, that'll come in handy someday. Dom taps three for a bomb, which enters as a four four, but gets plus one plus one from the elvish champion, making it a five five. He then taps Titanic Blade for four and plays Lightning Greaves and Mask of Memory. He equips Mask of Memory to A-Bomb and then he attaches Lightning Greaves to A-Bomb. Dom swings at Keith with A-Bomb, bringing Keith down to 34. Dom then draws two cards because of the Mask of Memory and then discards a Haunted Cloak. Dom passes his turn. At the end of Dom's turn, Keith uses Kumena to tap three Merfolk, drawing him a card. At the beginning of Keith's turn, Harold's horn triggers, so Keith looks at the top card of his library. He reveals a Surge Spanner, which he then puts into his hand. Keith taps two for Marrow Commerce. He then taps two for Lord of Atlantis to give all of his merfolks plus one plus one and Island Walk. Because another merfolk entered the battlefield, River Sneak gets another plus one plus one until end of turn. He then taps Tidal Warrior to make one of Dom's lands an island until end of turn. Keith then goes sideways at Dom, dealing him six unblockable. Keith ends his turn, so he is able to untap all of his merfolk with Marrow Commerce. Sterling plays a mountain. He then taps five for the first sliver. Sterling then cascades for a non-land card that costs four or less. He then pulls a striking sliver, giving all of his slivers first strike. He taps four for a toxin sliver, he then cascades into an Eldrami's Call, which allows him to search his library for a creature card and put it into his hand. Sterling mistakenly reveals a Sliver Legion and puts it into his hand. He then taps five to play the Sliver Legion to give all Slivers a plus one plus one counter for each other Sliver in play. And then like a huge dumb idiot, he misses the Sliver Legion's Cascade trigger because of the first Sliver and passes his turn. McCoy finally draws a mountain and immediately and forcefully plays it. He then taps three for Cultivate, some sweet, sweet long overdue ramp. He puts a tapped planes onto the battlefield and a forest into his hand. He then passes his turn. Dom plays a forest. He then taps three for an elvish arch druid, which pumps a bomb by one and gives all elves an additional plus one plus one. He then taps the priest of Titania for five. He uses four of that five mana to play Harmonize to draw three cards. He then uses the rest of his mana, forgetting to tap his command tower, to play a Reclamation Sage. He uses the Sage's ETV trigger to blow up Sterling's Chromatic Lantern. He moves the Greaves over to the Arch Druid, and then taps the Arch Druid to create six mana. He uses four of the mana to play Court of Bounty, stealing Monarch from Sterling. He then uses the rest to play Regeneration, and attaches it to A-Bomb. He moves his Greaves back to A-Bomb, and then attacks Keith for eight. Keith takes it, bringing him down to 26 life, 13 commander damage. Dom draws two cards with the Mask of Memory, and then discards an Elvish Visionary. Dom ends his turn. At the end of Dom's turn, Keith taps five Merfolk with Kamena to give all of his Merfolk plus one plus one. Keith then starts his turn. Herald Horn triggers, but it isn't a merfolk, so it goes back on top. Keith taps two for Kapala, Warden of Waves, which gives River Sneak another plus one plus one. He then taps three for Surge Spanner. He taps Surge Spanner with Kumena's ability to give Kumena unblockable until end of turn. When Surge Spanner becomes tapped, 
it allows Keith to send a permanent card back to a player's hand, so Keith sends Dom's command tower to prevent any shenanigans from Dom. He taps Tidal Warrior to make one of Dom's lands an island, and then hits Dom for 10 unblockable. Keith ends his turn, though he draws for Monarch and untaps his Merfolk again. Sterling taps 3 for Spiteful Sliver, which gives every Sliver an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter because of Sliver Legion. He then cascades into a Venom Sliver, which allows him to cascade again. He cascades into Swords to Plowshares, which he then targets Dom's Reclamation Sage with. Dom gains 3 life from the Swords to Plowshares, then Sterling taps 1 for Wayfarer's Barble. He then swings a shit ton of flying slivers at Dom, which is more than needed to take him out, so Dom dies. He then taps the Wayfarer's Burble to play a tapped forest and ends his turn. Just saying, definitely a salt base move on two people's parts. Dude, you attacked me for 13! That's not a salt base <laughs> yeah. move on my part. That's me getting even with you. That's salt. Yeah, but, okay. but that's salt. Yeah, well, then why would you attack me and not Sterling, who had all that shit out? Because I couldn't get through and he has death. He touch. has a forest on the field. He did not. Now I do. Oh. Well. Yeah, you were the only one with a forest. Well. Could have attacked the boy. <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> okay, uh. you, you got me on that one. McCoy plays the planes, then taps the field for Sun Scorched Regent and attaches his Greaves to it. McCoy hits Keith with his region, bringing Keith to 22 and making McCoy the monarch. McCoy ends his turn and draws to Monarch. At the end of McCoy's turn, Keith taps Merfolk Looter to draw a card and discard a card. He discards Court of Bounty, not needing it since we already saw Dom play it, and also taps five Merfolk to give all of his Merfolk plus one plus one again. At the beginning of Keith's turn, Harold's Horn triggers, but again, it's not a Merfolk, so he puts it back. He plays an island and then taps the island for a soul ring I will tap. <laughs> Fuck Sterling. He taps a Tidal Warrior to make one of Sterling's islands an island again. He then swings at Sterling for an unblockable 16. And when Search Banner becomes tapped, he sends Sliver Legion back to Sterling's hand to remove all of his Sliver's plus one plus one counters. He then ends his turn and then taps all of his creatures. Sterling untaps like a slob and then plays and cracks an Arid Mesa to bring out a Plains. He then taps two to play a Crystalline Sliver to give all of his Slivers Shroud. He doesn't bother cascading after playing the Crystalline Sliver because he knows that there's nothing he can play in his deck anymore that costs one. He then casts Sliver Legion again and cascades into a Cloud Shredder Sliver, which gives all of his Slivers flying in haste. Sterling swings four of his Slivers at McCoy, all pumped by Sliver Legion just to be safe, and swings the rest of his slivers at Keith. To give Sterling a heart attack, Keith responds by tapping three merfolk to draw a card. Not finding what he's looking for, he then taps another three merfolk to draw another card. He doesn't draw into anything he needs, and Sterling finally wins again. Yes! <laughs> Thank you for joining us on today's Table Salt EDH gameplay. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us what you thought of the game, favorite commanders, saltiest player, or let us know any commanders you'd like to see us build around and play. We'll see you next time.